We're going to do a 20 table joint across 20 systems. Let me show you how we set it up. We're going to hit the migrate button and we're going to first show you the importance of data migration. So let's migrate data from 20 table join where I have 20 tables from Oracle over to Postgres. So I pick the source of Oracle and I hit Postgres and I hit the database and schema that I wanted to go to. I click the tables that I want. I hit the blue arrow. Everything that had a check mark moves, and now I hit execute. The nexus is converting the table structures between Oracle to Postgres and building load utilities, and it's moving the data like nobody's business, and we're done. So a very important piece of this is moving the data. I can even see the logs. So these are the load scripts that were built automatically. Now, I'm going to convert the DDL, or the table structures. Look how fast that was. It usually takes months. I converted all my Oracle tables over to Postgres just to show you a big part of migration and joining data is automatic conversion. Now, here's the next piece of this. Let's look at this in dark mode. Nexus is like a chameleon. It's called the chameleon because it can change colors and fit in any environment. So here we go. Isn't that pretty? Saves the eyes. Now I'm getting down to my Postgres system. I want to go to my 20 table join where I just moved this data. This is how we set it up. We put these 20 tables on 20 different systems where we will join them across 20 different systems. So first of all, notice that Nexus, you can write the SQL. It's a query tool. It brings back the result sets brilliantly. Queries all systems. That took 18 years in itself. Now, let's go back to light mode. I'm going to move things around here. Here's my systems tree on the left. Let's put this in a different order. So this will be the order that we kind of load things. But here we go. There's my Postgres system. Now, the next piece of this that you have to be able to do, not everybody's technical as a data scientist. They don't even know SQL. Nexus will build it for you. I right-click on my addresses table and it shows it to me visually. That's the first thing. There's all the columns. There's nothing it joins to because we haven't set it up yet. So let me show you how I do that. I drag the subscribers table in and I just touch it and now I say how it joins, hit the blue arrow, those two tables join. Now watch, I'm gonna drag the claims table into subscribers, I touch it. It says, how do they join? I go subscriber number and member number. So there they are. But now I hit subscriber number and subscriber number, hit the blue arrow, member number and member number, and hit the blue arrow. And you can see that's how it joins. So the tables are all set up. We won't have to do this again. It has to be done one time. Now watch very carefully. A business user can come in and all they have to do is select the columns they want on the report and Nexus builds the SQL automatically. It's already done. However, if I want to change the order of the columns, I go, oh, at the top, those are the columns I chose. Yeah, I want first name first. I want last name be next. I don't need claim ID. Oh, I forgot gender. The stuff at the bottom is what I didn't click. But now, everything I touch, the SQL's first name, last name. Now I want to order the data. So I want to order by first name, last name, and claim date descending. Now I'm sorting the report at the end. So this is what I have. Go to my joins. I'm going to make left outer joints here so I can do whatever I want. All point and click. No matter what system you're on, it builds the SQL. And now you can see the next portion of this. Okay, you have to be able to have a visual tool that builds the SQL for the user. Now, let's get this set up once again with the Super Join Builder. Notice now, the next time I come in here, it shows me what joins together by hitting the Add Joins. I'm going to save this join. This is how you set things up for your business user community. So I can share it. I can say, OK, from this point on, this is already set. Users just bring this up. They point and click. They're running these reports. So you saw how I set it up for all my business users, and I saved this. The next time a business user wants to do it, they just go right to the Super Join Builder. They go right to this Load Join, and they go, I want to do this Insurance 101 that you saved, and there it is. They pick the columns they want on the report, and now they go, oh, this is awesome. I'm executing this like nobody's business. 
we spent 18 years, so you would spend about 18 minutes. I've just set up my 20 tables on just Teradata. I can see the SQL blown up for me. I'm going to go look at the size of each table by hitting the magnifying glass there. And I can see the larger tables versus the smaller tables. So I can make decisions about where I want to process things. And when I come down here, I can even see the systems and the objects to say, oh, it's all on. Uh, this is all done on my Teradata system here. And these are the size of the tables there. I can kind of get a view of the systems and the tables. But most important thing when I'm ready, I hit execute. This is doing a 20 table join on one system. In this case, it's Teradata. And now I'm going to get my 2,000 rows here. And it's processing pretty quickly. And there are my 2,000 rows. And here's my report of a single system doing a 20 table join. And it is extremely beautiful. You can see so much data here. Could we do a 100 table join across the 100 systems? Yeah. I'm going to save this result, and I can do a lot with it. I can save it as an Excel, a JSON. I can save it as a Tableau or a Power BI. And that's the way you can save things and put them on any system or put them any place. I save this on Excel. Now I've got an Excel spreadsheet of this data. That's important too. Now here we go. Get ready. I'm going to show you how you do a federated query across systems. We'll start with our Vertica system. I move that to the top this time. We go to our 20 table join and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say addresses super join builder. So now the Vertica table is out here in the super join builder and I'll come to my Teradata system and I'll go to my 20 table join where I have the same 20 tables and I go okay I'm going to drag in subscribers. I touch the Vertica table and I go they join on subscriber number. There's my blue arrow. Once I say that, they go, okay, the on clause is added to that join. We know now how it joins. It's got to be told one time. I look here, the, the Vertica table is a little bit smaller. Teradata, teradata table is larger. Notice the little icons up there, the V and the T. Now we're going to add in our next table. Let's go to our Snowflake system. Open our Snowflake tree. We're going to come to claims, drag it in, touch the subscribers table. That's what it joins to. And they go, well, define how it joins. We've seen this before. Subscriber number, subscriber number, blue arrow. And in this case, member number, member number. And now we joined these three tables. So now we're doing a three table join across three systems. Pretty sweet. You know how this works now. I'm going to pick the columns I want to see on the report. I want first name and I want last name. And now I'm going to get the street here and the city and the state. And now let's get the claim date and the claim amount. Now, notice that we're running this on the hub of Vertica. This means that the Teradata table and the Snowflake table will move to Vertica and then the SQL will run there. And then we will drop those tables that are temporary. And there it goes. You've seen a federated query. It brings back my 2,000 rows from my claims table. I'm good to go. Now let's set it up. I've got 20 tables here that I did from every one of these systems, almost in this exact order. It includes Athena. So I've got an S3 bucket out there. I'm going to add Excel. So I go to the top. I say import Excel. I'm doing the county workbook brings up my worksheet. So the 20th table will be an Excel spreadsheet. It actually joins to the addresses table. So I pick right there. Now they go, hey, how's that Excel worksheet joined to addresses? And I go, city and city. That's how it joins. Right there's the on clause. They go, wow, this is pretty amazing. 20 tables, from 20 systems, including Microsoft Access, Excel, Athena. As you can see, I can see all of my tables if I go and do a magnifying glass. Now I'm going to pick the columns that I want to see. I want to see the claim date, claim amount. I want the state from Vertica or the phone from Vertica. I'll get the first name and the last name from Teradata. 
I will go to Redshift and I'll get the provider name and the error rate. I'll go to my Azure Synapse and get service description. Hey, from Oracle, we'll get the state's full name. I will go to my Microsoft Access table and we will get the facility number, the technician. Now let's go get with the, uh, we'll get the nurse and the production hours of the hospital. I'm going to come down here to my Postgres system and I will get the grocery costs per state. I'll get some crime statistics from DB2. I'm going to go to SQL Server and get the doctor's name who performed the procedure, the college they went to from MySQL. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Okay, so now I'm over here and I'm going to go to my Green Plum system and get Latitude Longitude, my SAP system to get state the state population. We'll go to Natiza, get the state tree and the state flower. I'm going to my SQL Lite system and get state governors. I'm going to get the uh, another or a different Oracle system, a different MySQL system. And now I've picked the columns I want on the report. Let's not forget, I want to see the county name uh, in my Excel spreadsheet and the state name. SQL's been built for me. You've seen it before. If I don't like the way the columns look, I can go and change anything I want to change. I can change the order, I can do left out or joins, whatever I want to do here, but we're good to go. The SQL has been built. I'm going to change, at least put a few things in here so we can do it better. I got my first name and my last name. I'm going to order by first name, last name, and I'm going to do it claim date descending. So I'm going to run this report from different systems. You'll see this. This is the brilliance behind the Nexus. Okay. Now, I've got everything here that I need to do. The data is going to be sorted, so we will see the same report multiple ways here. Watch very carefully because this is the brilliance behind it. I can process this on any system, including my PC, so however it's best to process the joint. That's why I can look at the, the graph and the chart to see which is the biggest table. If i got a billion row table, you don't want to move that. You want to process things on that system where it resides, where it sits. Sometimes if the data is smaller, process it on your PC. You can process it on a DB2 system or a SQL Server system. So my hub right now, it is Vertica. So if I hit execute, everything's moving to the Vertica system. And it's going to, there's the logs. That means the data's movement through the scripts, just like you saw before with the data movement. It's moving only the columns and the rows needed to process this. And there are my 2,000 rows. That is a 20 table join across 20 different systems. Unbelievable. But it's taken 18 years of constantly working with the largest customers in the world and adding to this. Now I'm going to change the hub. Watch this very carefully. Look at all the systems. I can run this anywhere. When I change this hub, now I'm going to bring the SQL up because I'm going to change this to a SQL Server hub and watch how that SQL changes. So come down here, find SQL Server. And I go, that's the hub where I want to process this. It says, you want to change the hub? And I go, yes. It says, this is where I'll put the tables temporarily, and there is the SQL change. That's TSQL. Nexus knows how to change the SQL, and when I execute this, all of these tables, instead of moving to Vertica, are moving over to SQL Server, and now the SQL's processed. There is my report. Same report, same order, 2,000 rows, but this time it was processed on SQL Server. Hey, hard to believe? Let's do this again. I'm going to process this on my PC. That means every one of these tables will be queried separately, almost like a single query. They'll bring it back to my PC in the background, where the Nexus inside your PC using the CPU there will join this. These are all my tables. They're going to be all brought back, only the columns and rows necessary, and it will bring it back to my PC, and I execute this. Every table is coming back to my PC in the background, and now, hey, there's nobody on my PC. No other systems being bothered. It's all done right there in my PC. Now, that is the most brilliant thing 
forever. Your PC is, in a sense, with Nexus, almost like its own data warehouse. It can do analytics on answer sets, join answer sets. It can do about a million things. Now, I'm going to save this join for all my business users so that they can run it, change it. I call it a 20 table join with Athena. I got Athena table in there. I am also going to include it uh, with Excel. All right. And I've got access in there too. So, I mean, I can, let's just make this real simple. So Athena, Excel, access, and uh, 17 other systems. <laughs> I know you're never going to need to do that, but this is what you need in the future as you start to do a lot of two table joins across different Oracle systems or across two systems, any, any ones you have. Now, okay, I'm going to bring this in. I've been recording this and you can see this. Watch very carefully now. These are all of the systems that I'm doing all of these joins on right now. But watch what I'm going to do in my systems tree. I'm going to come down here. I'm a business user. I just say I want to add this federated query that was built for me. It's called a 20 table join with Athena, Excel, Microsoft Access. And now it's in this tree. So when I come in in the morning, I just bring this up and they go, um, are you going to do the super join builder stuff? And I go, no, I already have it. It's been built for me by the IT department. I'm just going to execute this. It's designed to come in on my PC. And you're going to see this start running here in just a second. Okay, it's gathering all the information it needs, and here it goes. It's bringing everything back to my PC right here, and when it's done, if there's less than 5,000 rows, it's done in seconds. It's running, and all 20 tables are coming back. You can see them coming. There they are. They're coming to my PC where they are about to deliver the report for the business user. There it is. 2,000 rows, same order, exact same thing we had. If tables were updated to underlying tables, this could be a bigger report. That's how you do a 20-table federated query across 20 systems. Now, if you had 500 million rows, you could use a Nexus server where you set everything up on your PC, but you run it through the Nexus server. And that Nexus server is the conduit that brings in all these systems. I'm Tom Coffing, CEO of Coffing Data Warehousing. If you want to try Nexus, all you have to do is give us an email, sales at coffingdw.com. Yeah, there it is right there. Just email us and we can get you some trials and you can try this out. Let me give you my cell phone. Give me a call at 513-300-0341. Thank you so much for coming.